a correction. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, it is unwise to despise reproofs because reproof is the way of life. That's yeah. right. Yeah. And look at Proverbs chapter 5. And we'll begin at verse 1. My son, my son, attend to my wisdom. He's saying, pay, he's saying, he's saying, pay attention to me, okay? Mm -hmm. And bow thine ear. That means to have a ear like this. You know, bow the ear means that you're listening, right? Not like this. Oh, come on. That's you good. You know what I mean? Like yep. this. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Old, you're not doing this physically, uh -huh. but inside you're going, shut up, right? Yeah. 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 And thou not hear my understanding, because it's going to teach you something. That thou mayest regard discretion, it means to be discreet, uh, and that thy lips may keep knowledge. For the lips of a strange woman drop as an honeycomb, right? And her mouth is smoother than oil. But her hand is bitter as wormwood, and sharp as a two edged sword. She'll cut you to pieces. Yeah. Her feet go down to death. Her steps take hold on hell. She will lead you the way to hell. Lest I should just ponder the path of life, her ways are moving. You can't, you can't figure her out. She's shifty. But thou canst not know them. You, you can't figure her out. Hear me now, therefore, O ye children, and depart not from the words of my mouth. Remove thy way far from her. Get away from her. And come not nigh the door of her house. Don't, don't go where she's at. Don't even go in her house. Don't even go near the door of the house. Now watch. Lest thou give thy honor on others. See, when you're with this whorish woman, what happens is you lose your honor. You lose respect. And thy years are to the cruel. Now watch this. Lest strangers be filled with thy wealth, because she'll take your money. She only wants your money. See, the stranger is a strange woman. She'll take your money, got your wealth. And here you are eating at in and out That's all you can afford, you know? So, <laughs> and thy labors be in the house of a stranger. She's got, she's got your house. She's got the stuff in your house. She owns your house. She divorced you. And a lot of divorces yeah, go on yeah. here in California, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Hollywood, right? Yeah. yeah. Now, preach. Now watch. Now watch this. And thou mourn at the last. You cry at the last. When thy flesh and thy body are consumed. Yeah. There's your syphilis and your gonorrhea and your venereal warts and your AIDS, right? Yes, sir. Yes, right? And say, how have I hated instruction? I, I hated instruction, right? Mm -hmm. And my heart despised re reproof. I hated correction. Yeah. And have not obeyed the voice of my teacher, nor inclined my ear to them yes, that instructed me. I look at Proverbs chapter 6. Look at Proverbs chapter 6. You don't understand where I'm going in a little bit. In Proverbs chapter 6, look at verse 23. For the commandment is a lamp. This, the word of God is a lamp that gives you light. And the law is light. And reproofs of instruction are the way of life. What does that mean? Correction throughout life is life. Yes, That's the way it is. Say, yes, so what do you mean? I'm 37 years old. I still get corrected. Yes, sir. I still get taught. I never arrive to retain in any way. That's life. Yes, sir. Take correction. Mm -hmm. And go, okay, at least someone's looking out for me. Someone cares. Yeah. And now watch. Ungodly children really are a grief. They really are a grief mm. to everyone around them. And so my question is, what makes a good young person that is raised in a key name bodily the church turn out to be ungodly. Mm -hmm. Why are they turning out wicked? You know the key name's Bible, right? Yeah. You believe it, right? Yes, sir. You know the truth, right? Yes, sir. Why are you still wicked? Mm -hmm. right. Why are you going that way? And I just want to preach to you, the young people, a message the Lord gave me this week yeah, for you guys. And I just want to preach to you a message titled, I really don't care. Oh. I really don't care. And I want to title that for you. I'm not mad at you at all. I just want to preach to you some things about I really don't care. Some of you really don't care. You say you do. You know what I mean? But how do you live outside this camp? Yeah, come on. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Would you pray with me? Now, Lord, I love you. Lord, I love these people. Lord, I pray for them. I'm so looking forward every year to coming here. Lord, I, I told churches across America that this is the best, best youth group uh, God I've ever preached to. And I pray, God, that they would grow uh, more and more yes, into the image of Christ. Yes, filled with the knowledge of the uh, Lord Jesus Christ, we fill the Spirit of God. Lord, it's the beginning of a, a first night and the first week, uh, every week here. And Lord, I just pray to you, help me, Lord. I'm in liberty. I'm going to make sense. Lord, save those who are lost. Amen. God, no doubt people Amen. are lost. And they don't God, care, yes. Lord. But I pray God this message will convict them. Yes. So Lord, I do pray, God, for those who are lost. That they'll stay up tonight. You give a vision of hell. Yes, Torment them, Lord. Help to see Jesus Christ die for them. Uh, Lord, I pray the thousand air will not pluck the word out of the heart that's been so. Protect us now, cover us with your blood. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Number one, the first thing I say is that when you don't care, number one, you deny the existence of God. You deny the existence 
of God. Some of you live your life as if God was not omnipresent. So what's omnipresent? It means everywhere present. You act like and live like God does not see what you do. You think God's blind. You think that when you turn out the lights or shut the door of your bedroom or whatever, oh. or hide in your room from your mom and dad, oh. that God all of a sudden doesn't see anything. Yeah. The eyes of the Lord, in Proverbs chapter 15, verse 3 says, the eyes of the Lord are in every place of the whole of the evil and the good. God sees what you do. God is not blind. And you all have to forget that. And listen, you all have to realize that not only does God see everything, you need to realize that you don't know everything. God knows everything. Amen. God is wisdom. Yeah. And in Him is wisdom. Amen. And in us, we have all the wisdom of God. That's an amazing thing when you think about it. But does God come to you for advice? <laughs> Some of you think He does. Yeah. Like you're going to talk with God and say, God, what do you, what do you think about it? Yeah. What do you think about that? Uh -huh. He knows everything. Right. Uh -huh. You can't pull one over on God. God's already there. God's in tomorrow. Right. He's in forever. Amen. We're in the present. Yes, sir. He is in the beginning. Yes, sir. What are you going to teach him? Right. <laughs> you know what? Can you be his counselor? Is God going to lay on your recliner and tell you all his problems? You're going to help him out. Mom. I was in Romans chapter 11, verse 34. For who hath known the mind of the Lord? Yeah. Or who hath been his counselor? How can you know as much as God? Yeah. Tell me. Where are the treasures of the snow hidden? He asks. Where's the beautiful rubies and the topaz? I mean, he talks about in the book of Job. Tell me. Yeah, tell me. Yeah. You know it all? Yeah, come on. come on. You know what I mean? Where's the unicorns he talks about? Yeah. <laughs> right? You know it all, right? Tell me how the volcanoes were formed. Uh -huh. Oh, that's good. Uh -huh. Do you know it all? Yeah. You cannot. You don't know as much as God. In Romans chapter 11, verse 33, Oh, the depth of the riches, both the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are His judgments Amen. and His ways past finding out. You deny His power. Yeah. Yeah. You live your life really with an arrogant attitude. You think because you could do maybe 20 push-ups that you can land top. You think because you know, whatever it is, you can take God off. Uh -huh. You can't beat God. That's no. right. Great. You'll never win against God. Yeah. Right. But you think you're tough enough to challenge God. You deny his holiness yeah. by living the simple life that you live yeah. when no one else is around. Character is what you are when no one else is around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what you are. Mm -hmm. You are what you are when no one else sees you. Yes, yeah. sir. Right. Never mistake the long suffering of God for him accepting your simple living. God lets you get away with a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you, think that God, you think God's pleased with your simple living. Uh -huh. So well, I got away. Here's Samson, right? Messing around with women, right? Yes, sir. Oh yeah, you know, I, I can do it. I can still pull up, you know, you know, the gate, I can carry it up a hill and I can still show I have had the power of God in my life, right? Mom. Well I can have her, you know, pin my hair in this web and all that, pin it to a thing, and, and then one day he lost the power of God. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. You better not deny God. He's not he's tired of your sins. He's not pleased with your sins at all. Yeah. And God knows all your secret sins. He knows all your faults. That's why David said, cleanse me from all my secret faults. He knows all your thoughts. He knows what you're thinking right now. He knows what you're thinking right now. He knows what you're thinking. Okay, man, there's a new girl here. I want to talk to her. And, Whoa. I can't believe you talk like that. I was a teenager. God, God knows every thought. He knows your thoughts. He knows your yeah. downsitting, yeah. your uprising. He knows your thoughts are far off. Yeah. You know what you don't fear? You don't fear God. Pray. Yeah. Pray. Yeah. To top it all off, God knows what you're going to do and everything you're going to do until the day you die. Mm -hmm. That's an amazing thing. Yes, sir. Man. It doesn't matter if you deny the existence of God, God will still exist. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. It's like a little kid does this, right? Oh, I will see you. Come on. Right? Come like, on. What does that mean? He, you know, you're not there. Chris. He is there. Yeah. 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 He's still on the throne. Yeah. 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 But your parents, your parents have taught you the truth of the word of God. They have sacrificed for you to come here, Chris. and you don't care. Come on. Chris. Chris. You think your parents owe you. You don't mm -hmm. owe you anything. That's right. That's right. Some of you deny the truth of the Word of God. Yeah. You don't believe this Bible. Yeah. Well, you know, I 
how do you know that Noah got all those animals on the ark? Eighty uh, percent of creation is water. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So he's only got to fit twenty percent of creation on the ark. And what makes you think he brought the giraffe big? He could have brought them small. Yeah. Oh. And how do you know Noah didn't have like a little shrinking ray gun? You know. <laughs> But you're being stupid. Yeah. yeah. Come on. I mean, if you do that, I mean, if you really believe the word of God, then why do you live contrary to it? Yeah. yeah. For you to Come deny on. this Bible is to deny the very existence of God. Yeah. Right. So, well, I'm educated. You're a fool. Hey, oh, man. You're a fool. Yeah. Number two. Second thing I want to say is when you deny the existence of God because you don't care. Number two, you don't care. You know, and when you don't care, guess what's going to happen? About the things of God, your sin will deceive you. You're sin will deceive you. You're so deceived. You think you can keep living in sin. And you can't even be reasoned with. You can't even be persuaded with. We cannot even tell you otherwise. You are so hard-headed that you see nothing wrong with your sin. Yeah. And you're making yeah. excuses yeah. for your sin. Yeah. 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 You know, I understand all that. God loves me because we're all sinners and all that. Listen, uh, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid! Oh, yeah. 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 Well, you know, well, that's the way it is. No, no, you're just meant to ruin. You are destroying yourself, and you have anger and hatred towards those around you. Yes, sir. Who are trying to help you, who are trying to warn you, and who love you. Amen. You don't love me, man. I do love you. Amen. I do care for you. I want to fly 3,000 miles from Philadelphia. Yeah, come on. I'm here everybody to care. Yeah. Yeah. You, you count your parents. You count your friends. You count Pastor Shrive and, and Pastor Kim uh -huh. as your worst enemy. No. Why does Mother Jake get up and preach hard? Why is, why, why is Gina all excited and screaming? Why, yeah. can't, he just, why, why, why can't it just be like us? Yeah. <laughs> right? Never happened, bro. Come on, get him. Since, since we love you, what are we to do? Yeah. We love you. Amen. As that, we love you. Mr. Shrive, Pastor Shrive. Uh, Pastor, uh, Pastor Kim, Mrs. Kim, I do, we care about you. So what do we do? Are we just sit back? Are we not to say anything about what we may see in you that you may not see you're doing? And that you continue in? Yeah. Should we not say to you, hey, you know what? I know your attitude is really spunk lately. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Katie, good girl. Amen. Uh, uh, years, ago, years ago, she had a bad attitude. That's right. She didn't care. How much I mean me? Yeah. I embarrass her. Right? But you know what? You know what? One way. Katie went the other. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm not trying to embarrass you. You understand? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you see, it, it really doesn't matter. You, you can deceive yourself yeah. into thinking you're okay. Yeah. Yeah. Some of you think because you're here, you're spiritual. Come on. Oh, 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 I'm, here. Oh, oh. You know, I'm here. You know, therefore I'm right with God. You can be here just for fun. Yeah. 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 You know what I mean? Are we not to persuade you to do right? Are you be, are you beyond reasoning? Would you rather we really left you alone? Some of you would rather be around liars, yeah, and right, drunkards, right. and drug addicts, yeah. fornicators, than to be the presence of Christians. Yes, sir. Yeah. And rather than be in the presence of your parents. Yeah. Yeah. I can't understand why people get along. What is it about people getting along with their saved, getting along with the world more than Christians? But if you're of the world, the world loves its own. That's yeah. right. You need to check your salvation. Yeah. 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 In the presence of lost people, mm -hmm. something's not right about that. Yes, yes, sir. Your thinking is not rational. That's your right. sin right. is blinding you. You're That's devoid right. of any wisdom or satisfaction. God is your only source of satisfaction. Hey. If you do not live for God, you will be miserable. That's why when you come out, you hear Pastor Kim, you're like, why is he like that? He's like a dictator. <laughs> you preach too hard. Why is he so rough? You know, you're miserable. Yeah. Oh, good. You're like, I can't wait to go to college. So when I leave, when I go to college, I can leave. And then you'll begin to wonder when you're in college, what's the purpose of life? That's yes. Why am I here? Mm -hmm. why, why do I exist? Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah, everybody goes through that. Yeah. Yeah. And your sin is pleasurable. It is. And there's plenty of sin available. So oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Man. oh, yeah. LA, man, you can go to different yeah. places a lot. And your heart's deceiving you into thinking that you're living it up when you're actually living oh, yeah. it up. Yeah. And your sin is deceiving you into thinking that you will not reap what you suck. Yes, sir. It's going to come around. Yeah. Whether you're saved or lost, what goes around comes around. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For what sort of man saw it, that shall be also reap. Yeah. Promise of God. What you plant, you're going to reap. Yeah. You plant a watermelon seed. You know how big that watermelon is? Yeah. And guess what? 
what? You cut it open, how many seeds are in there? Your sense is even to thinking that you'll never reap what you sowed. And sin so to see. And you don't realize how blind you become. You, your dress is changing. Oh, your yeah. speech is changing. Oh, yeah. Your friend is it's all gradual. It's not all of a sudden, okay, let's go smoke pot, get drunk. It's oh, all of a sudden, it's like slow. Well, yeah, I don't want to get drunk. Exactly. And then the, the first thing that changes is the outward appearance. And I'm not a legalist, but the dress, it changes. It's like, yes, sir. You, you start showing things, and then your attitude, and then you're like, you know, and, you know talk to the hand. <laughs> And drugs and immorality and cigarettes and sex and liquor will never bring lasting satisfaction. And your shame will one day, your sin will one day turn to shame. Yes, sir. And your sin one day will clothe you in rags. Amen. Proverbs chapter 23, verses 20 through 21 says, Be not among wine bibbers. That means don't be around those who are drinking wine, among riotous eaters of flesh, for the drunkard and the glutton shall come to poverty, and drowsiness shall clothe the man with rags. So what are you getting at? You ever see a guy on the street corner with a sign, and he says, Go work for food? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You ever see a guy, and you know he won't. No, no. <laughs> no. He wants money. No. And, yeah. He can stand for eight hours. Uh -huh. oh, yeah. He can stand eight hours to the murders. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now that guy, you think he, when he was your age, he said, one day I'm gonna, my, my, my goal, my achievement in life is to wake up in my vomit. <laughs> you think that's his goal? Yeah. Some of you, you know what you're thinking, well... You know, Brother Rodney comes once a year. Thank God he's only here once a year. <laughs> and then you go on your own thing. And you know what? You don't realize that your sin is not satisfying. Yeah. It's only temporary. Yeah. You need to count the cost. Watch. Pretty girl. Mm. I like to be with her. Let's do it. Right? Mm -hmm. Now you lost your purity. Ten minutes of pleasure. It's over. Finished up. Yeah. yeah. Now she may be pregnant. Mm -hmm. Or you may have AIDS. Was it really, I mean, you've got to really, you gotta really consider that latter act of the Bible says. Yeah. You really, really count the cost. Yeah. yeah. I'm not above temptation. When I think about my wife, I think about my kids, I think about everything I got, it ain't worth throwing away. Amen. Amen. For drugs, women, nothing. Amen. Bread of deceit is sweet to a man. But afterwards, his mouth should be filled with gravel. In Proverbs chapter 20, verse 17. What does that mean? Well, it's so sweet, it tastes so good. Well, who wants to have a gravel, a mouthful of gravel? Yeah. <laughs> Promise you have decided to have sin over God. You're on the road of wickedness because you have chosen that road. Well, it's my mom, it's my dad. No, you chose that road. And you cannot wait to leave home or church because you want to live in sin. That's right. And you despise your preacher who preaches to you every week. You despise your parents who pray for you every day. Yeah. You do not love your parents for the church. You are absolutely disobedient children. Your fakes are hypocrites. You're frauds. You call them oh, smile. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. God. you sit there like this. And, and the worst group to preach to is Christians. Yep. Yes, sir. I go to the Tunis Tent Center. That's easy because they already know they're sinners. You don't think you are. Yeah. Uh, preach. 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 That's the way. And listen, you need to never forget this. The world and the flesh and the devil will never give you satisfaction. Yeah. Right. Amen. Number three. When you don't care, you're a detriment. A detriment to the lives of others. A detriment. See, what is that? You're just deadly to others. You're a detriment. An ungodly child is no good to others. And he grows up. To be no good for any of anyone else. Yeah. He grows up will never be any good to his boss. His boss will never trust him to work on time. And his boss, his boss will never trust him that when he comes that he'll do work. And his boss will never trust him with their cash register. And his boss will lose money by hiring him. Because his work performance stinks. So what he does is he grows up to be a professional mooshinary. You know what I mean? Just a mooch. And he sits on a couch and he eats... And he always says, you know, what's up with that? Mm -hmm. You with me? Yes, my mm -hmm. man. So he lays on the couch all day and he just sucks the food out of the refrigerator. You know what I mean? Yep. <laughs> you know what? An ungodly child will grow up and it'll be no good to his church or his home. Yes, sir. Ungodly children hate the church. Yeah. Yes, sir. And what you do is you cause your parents grief and you cause them more some grief and you hurt them and you cause them more sorrow than you'll yes, ever Yes, sir. How many parents have I met across America? Yeah, I come on. my children. I raised them in a godly home. Yeah. I raised them in the King James Bible. We were back to saw our life. And I prayed for them and all that. They're living wicked. Yeah. Yeah. Shame on you. Yeah, yeah amen. Come on. I tell my kids, I said, I don't care if you're 30 years old. I will spank you. Mm -hmm. That's I will good. fight for you. Come right. on. And I will beat you. Yeah. yeah. See, that ain't right. I'm the parent. Yeah. So my, kid, my, kids yeah. looked, my kids looked at my mom. I said, we're laid back. <laughs> Sweet, you know. But I'm like, ah, you know. So 
And I look at my wife and they say, Mom, is he serious? And my, and my wife goes, Yes. And then we're like, Amen. 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 You know what? Why would you want to pull your brothers and sisters down with you? Yeah. An yeah. yeah. older yeah. sister. A lot, you know, lots far corrupted the youngest. Older always corrupts the youngest. Yeah. Yeah. The reason why you live wicked is because you're hanging out with somebody three years older than you. Yeah. That's how I learned. That's how I learned. Yeah, you got the wrong friends. Yeah. You ever bring your brother and sister down? I can't stand a man when the older corrupts the younger. Yeah. You know, you know what I mean? That ain't right. Yes, sir. You know what else? You want to pull others in your youth group down with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So you know what you're going to do this week? I'll tell you what you're going to do. I already know what you're going to do some of you. Oh. You're going to hang out with this who are not spiritual. Oh. Uh, did, you, did, you sneak, did you sneak the iPod or the iPad? Oh. 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 Let's text them all. I got a boyfriend from back home. I got to do this. Let's get together. Nobody will see us all. God sees you. Yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah. I tell my kids that all the time. I say, I'm not everywhere, but God is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you're doing. You say, what are you getting at? Well, you know what? You, you're a poison. <laughs> yes, sir. You're absolutely yes, sir. poison. Everyone knows around you is around you knows you cannot be trusted. You walk around with a spiteful heart. You come to church with an angry and depressed look. You come with an attitude. <laughs> really, I mean, grow up. Quit sucking your thumb. Amen. Right? You need a diaper change or something? What's wrong? Yeah. <laughs> but you have hatred in your heart towards your church and towards your home. Why would you hate the ones who love you? Amen. Why, why would you hate your mother and father? Listen. And they're saying, well, they're not perfect. Oh, and you are? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. Yeah. Really? I mean, I don't think they're that bad of a parent to have sent you here. <laughs> yes, sir. Right? Right? Yep. I mean, you'll do what you can to disgrace your parents when you grow up. You won't be a blessing. You'll become a burden to everyone around you. And people can't relax around you because you put all the Oh, spirit. come on. Now, you were right. You may do this. Uh, but it's, we can feel the inside of you saying, get away from me. Yes, sir. I don't like you. Yeah. You don't understand that. See, you think we preachers are all stupid. Now, we're not the brightest, but God gives us something like a sermon. Yeah. And then we'll get around you and we'll go, you're a pervert. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're, you got a sexual spirit. Amen. And we can sense it from you. You're a mess of pornography. Yeah. Or, you're a rich. Rich. Amen. 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 or we get around you and we'll say, you're just a rebel. And even though you just, hi, Brother Grande. Uh huh. I go, are you serious? Uh -huh. you, 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 think we're, you, you think we're dumb because you don't realize we were once teenagers. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So you don't understand. We know the, the mind of a teenager. Amen. Okay, so love me? People can't relax around you because you put off a spirit. And you know what I've seen? I've seen it in camp meeting. Is that one person can bring Yes, change a whole lot, sir. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Remember last year? I remember Andrew remember last year this. Because I looked at it, he looked at me like, what's going on, Brother Grande? I was talking about uh, snares of the devil. Remember? Can we talk about that? Remember that bad spirit for like the first 20 minutes? Oh, remember that? And all of a sudden it's left? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Remember that? 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 Yeah. And you're devilish in your ways. And all you're doing is damaging the lives of everyone around you who has zeal and a love for Jesus. Yes, sir. Oh, right. yes, sir. You don't you, look, you are not what you claim to be. Yeah. Right. Some of you not. Amen. Number four, and I'm done. Look at uh, Hebrews chapter ten. Hebrews chapter ten. Like I said in the book of Proverbs, how have I hated instruction? That's what you're gonna say. When you're there with those tubes down your throat, or you're pregnant, or you got some venereal disease, and you say, Preacher, will you come by and visit me in the hospital? And you're going to say, Oh, Preacher, how I have hated instruction. And not more than, Oh, I should have listened, I should have listened, I should, I should have took heed to what you were saying. You were right. You know what? Too late. Oh, God, forgive me. Yes, but they're still breathing. Yes, sir. I'm still reaping what I did. Yes, sir. The teenager? Ooh, man. I already know that. I, 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 man. You don't know what I was. You don't need to know what I was. All I can say to you is I'm still reaping years later what I did as a teenager. It ain't worth it. No, it ain't worth it. Hebrews chapter 10, number 4, and I'm done. Look at Hebrews chapter 10, verse 29. Of 
how much sore punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who hath trodden and he stepped on underfoot the Son of God and hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified on a holy thing and hath done despite the spirit of grace. Number four, when you don't care, you despise Christ's sacrifice. When you don't care, you despise Christ's sacrifice. You hate Jesus Christ. When you are not saved, you, you hate the light, neither come to the light, lest your deeds should be reproved. You hate Jesus Christ. I don't hate Him and accept Him. I don't want Him. You reject Him, you're not on His side, you're an enemy of God. One way or the other. I don't like that. Well, I didn't write the Bible. I mean, I'm old, but not that old. Amen. <laughs> You say you're saved, but your lifestyle is one that proves otherwise. Yeah. And what you do is you trample underfoot the precious blood of the Son of God. And I'm not in any way dismissing the idea of backsliding. What I'm talking about is that you who grow up and know better turn out to become the bitterest enemies of the gospel of Christ. Yeah, yeah. It's like, man, you talking like I'm for fun, man. What's up with you? You know? <laughs> they got tattoos, man. Had a guy. Oh, yeah. He said, look at this, man. Pulls up his shirt. He goes, there's a cross, man. He goes, when I'm roofing with the roofers, man, he goes, they know I'm a Christian. I'm like, <laughs> you don't get it. <laughs> you don't make any marks on your body. Yeah. <laughs> People are weird, ain't they? Yeah. Those are some Christian home, man. I want nothing to do with it, man. I think they're all hypocrites. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, well, I'll agree with you. We are all hypocrites at times. Uh huh. But not Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, you yeah. can find fault with me, but you can't find fault with him. Amen. So, uh, That's right. Amen. What I'm asking you now is if you're saved and you did it years ago, why do you no longer believe? Mm. That's my question. I'm not saying you can't backslide. Please. Okay, don't say, I'm not, I'm not saying all we like to going astray. I understand all that. But do you despise the salvation of the Lord? Yeah. Really? Do you also despise the blood of the Son of God? Listen to me, you need to listen very carefully. Yes, sir. Do you despise the price paid for you? Do you despise the price that Christ paid for you at Calvary? One old time preacher said this Ye live as if ye were baptized in the name of the devil, the world, and the flesh, to renounce the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. You walk according to the course of this world. You're a servant of sin instead of a servant of the Lord. And if you're lost or under the wrath of God, and if you're lost or not blessed, you are cursed. So I'm not cursed. You were under the curse of the law. You're cursed. God shows mercy to those who want Him. But God also shows His wrath to those who choose wrath. Let me ask you a question. How many of you want the judgment of God? How many of you really want to burn in hell for everything? Well, you ain't never been there, but I can tell you one thing, I will never be there. Yeah. Yes, the Lord. Thank Lord. Yeah. Woo. Woo. So what if you're wrong? Well, what if you're wrong? <laughs> so let's say for argument's sake the Bible's not true. Yeah. I, I, I'm, not, I'm just saying that, <laughs> you know, sarcastic. I have nothing to lose, but what if it is true? You got a lot to lose. So what's your problem? Man, you should be in the whole world and lose some of the soul. You know what? You're in danger whether you rise or not. And sooner or later, you will experience the judgment of God. Yeah. And sooner or later, your sin will cause you an early grave. For the fear of the Lord prolong the days, but the years of the wicked shall be short. Yeah. That's what it says, Proverbs 10, 27. If God is seemingly letting you get away with your sin, it's really to only bring up greater judgment yeah. and greater damnation. Mm -hmm. Right? Well, I don't understand all this. Well, you don't know God. And if you're lost, you're out of the way of God's mercy. And if you're lost, you are not standing in the grace and mercy and love of God. If you want God's love, it's at the cross. If you want God's justice, it's in hell. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you. I, I got saved because I was afraid of going to hell. Yeah. So we were tough. Nope, not that tough. Amen. And you know what? You're miserable without hope. And you may act so tough. That I have seen people, youth, young people, like this. Smirking, I'm thinking, stupid or something. Yeah. Do, you, do, you, do you not realize, you, you think you're getting an attitude with me, but you know, he, 
He that despises God's word shall suddenly be destroyed. Amen? Yeah. You will be destroyed. Yeah. Whoso despises the word of the Lord shall be destroyed. Bottom line. Uh -huh. You hate God's word. Right. Yeah. It's your choice. I can't get through to some of you. You won't listen at all. No. You no. Yeah. And you can laugh. I've had people laugh when I preach about the suffering of Christ. Mm -hmm. Literally. Wow. I had three teenage girls, and teenage girls like to be the most wicked, and they're sitting there laughing while I'm preaching about Christ's whipping and suffering. And they were laughing. They were laughing about death. They were laughing about hell. They were laughing about the judgment. Mm. And I got news for you. Your laughter will one day be turned to weeping. Yeah. That's, right. That's right. And your smiling and your smirk will one day turn to gnashing your teeth. Mm -hmm. And you'll be cast into hell where all will hate you there. Mm -hmm. Now here's what you think. Why do you know there's a God? Uh -huh. Well, you think life comes from nothing? <laughs> yeah. You just one day popped on your doorstep. Yeah. And said, Mom, Dad, here I am. <laughs> <laughs> right? Come on. The devils will hate you there. Mm -hmm. Your friends will hate you there. And God will hate you in hell. Mm -hmm. God doesn't hate. God does hate. Yes, sir. 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 Yes, God is consuming fire. Mm -hmm. God keeps it kindled. God didn't let the fire go out. Yeah. Are you preparing for death? Amos chapter 4, verse 12 says, Prepare to meet thy God. Yeah. You know, everybody's preparing for everything. Well, I'm going to college. Hey, I'm not knocking if you're going to college. I'm going to go. And I'm going to build my, give my house, give myself a big house, and marry yeah. one day, and I'm going to retire, and I'll go. And then what are you going to do? You're going to die. Yeah. You're gonna die. Did you know you're going to die one day? Yeah. Did you know that? It is a point where the man wants to die, but after this, to judgment. Mm -hmm. Why do you know you'll come back to like a beetle or something, or like a, a, a cow? Wants to die. Mm -hmm. No reincarnation. Yeah. Yeah. Death is nearer than you think. David said in 1 Samuel chapter 20, I'm almost done, verse 3, But truly as the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, there is but a step between me and death. A step. Are you prepared for the day of judgment? When you are not saved, you are not prepared for the day of judgment. Yes, sir. That's why you ought not to put off your repentance any longer. Oh, Do you know that you ought, not, you ought not to keep putting off your salvation? Yeah, he that be often reproved, that means often corrected, right? Corrected a lot of times. Well, he hardened his neck like this. Shall suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy. There's no fixing to it, Proverbs 29, verse 1. Right. You'll be destroyed. It's never too late to repent until you die. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2 says, Behold, now is the accepted time. Amen. Now. Now is the day of salvation. You must either repent or be damned to hell forever. Yep. That's right. And you must either choose to obey the devil or God. You are serving one or the other. God or the devil. Right. Right. You know, there are people that will pray. I mean, seriously, pray a prayer to get people off their back. Yeah, yeah. yeah that happens. You know what? You, you, ain't, you are despising the blood of you are hating Jesus Christ and His sacrifice. Amen. You are mocking Him. And you must either choose to be a son of God or a servant of Satan. I want to ask you, will you make peace with God through the Lord Jesus Christ? If you're ungodly, will you repent? And you believe the gospel. If you're saved and not living right, let me ask you a question. Will you start to care about the things of God? I don't care, preacher. That's okay. And you know what? Some of you may not care the whole week. You know what I've seen in you? See, you, you see me every year, right? Mm -hmm. Lord, one, you will, so the Lord comes back. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But every year I say, Pastor Shri, there's a change in that person. Uh, really? Okay. Really? I say, you can ask them, I say, man, they, they had a better spirit about them. Or, I didn't mean to embarrass Katie, you know? Mm -hmm. But I just say, she is sweet compared to what she was yeah. years ago. Yeah. Amen. So I, can see, I can see you growth. Through the years, and I can see whether you really care about it. What I'm concerned about is when I have been here with a big bear, it was a big bear, a bear, whatever we were at, a bear thing, whatever, whatever. 2007, somebody that I think I started preaching to you guys, I think it was. What I'm concerned about is the ones who still dress the same, so talk the yeah. same, act the same. Five years later, like, why aren't you changing? Yeah. Why? Would you, would you bow your head? Just keeping your seat by your head. You know, the first way to show others you really don't care about spiritual things is to deny the existence of God. Do you live your life 
as if there is no God. So I don't believe God. God needs to prove himself. Really? Okay, let's think about this for example. Explain to me how the Big Bang happened. Yeah. Just tell me. So well, it takes a lot of faith to believe that God made everything. Okay, well then show me the missing link. Just show me something as simple as that. And explain to me how we have over 300 different species of birds, of hummingbirds. Just hummingbirds alone. When did the bird decide to become a hummingbird? And when did he decide to become a vulture? Isn't that kind of weird? You know, we really think about nature itself. It teaches you that there is a designer. Which Lord willing, I want to get into this week about, is there a God? You'll be deceived when you don't care about the things of God. Some of you are dangerous to the lives of others. You're a detriment. I'm going to ask you, are you a blessing to others around you? When you see Jean Ha or Young Ha or Jay, I mean, you know, do you go up to them or Brother Joe and say, hey, you know what? Man, I've been praying for you, man. I love you, brother. Man, I'm glad you're still coming. Some of you don't care about anybody but yourself. Yeah. When you don't care about the things of God, it's because you despise Christ's sacrifice. You hate Jesus Christ. That is why you are not saved. That is why you reject... This is me ask a question. If you're not saved, the Lord Jesus Christ says, He that is not with me yeah. is against me. Do yeah. yeah. you understand that? Yes, if you're not on the Lord's side, you are an enemy of God. You are under the anger and wrath and justice of God. You are under the curse of the law. You're without hope without God, and you're lost, and you're a child of the devil. Now, you despise Christ. Say, I don't. Then you would get saved. I would ask you right now, are you saved? Or not? I would ask you again, real quickly, what will be your decision tonight? I really don't care. Okay? I'm not being rude. I'm not being mean. But I'll tell you right now, you know, what, you know, you know how much God's worried about it? Not at all. You know what? God sent His Son to the world down the cross for your sins. And when He was beaten and spit upon and mocked and laughed at, had His beard plucked and whipped across His back, had nailed to a cross, had His shoulders dislocated, had nails go through His wrists and through His feet, and He suffered a horrible death and then went to hell for you. And you think God's going to be in heaven going, Oh, 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 I, I don't know why I don't read. You know what He's going to say? Depart from me, cursed, into everlasting fire. Prepare for the devil. Because God's not worried about you going to hell. If you don't want him, that's fine. The Lord says that if you hate him to his face, he'll repay you. So he said to Deuteronomy. We have a big idea that God is some big Santa Claus in the sky. And he is going to keep overlooking sin. No, no. He hates sin so much, he let his son be sacrificed for you. So now you're going to be... You're spitting in the face of Jesus. Say, no, I'm not, when you reject Him. Your sins cause spit to be in His face. Your sins will cause Him to be whipped. And let me ask you a question, and I'm done. Two things, I promise you. Two things. No one looking around. Number one. Any of you this week, be honest, be honest now. Yeah, come on. You're saved and born again. Say, preacher, I really don't care about the Lord and His Word and about being here. And I haven't cared about praying much lately, but I want you to pray for me. Would you just raise your hand? I see your hand. Anybody else? Everybody else cares about the Lord? Everybody else loves the Lord here? Nobody's had any issues with them? Okay, I see your hand. Anyone else? Say, preacher, pray for me. I haven't had a good caring attitude. All right, let me ask you another thing. One, one last thing, and I'm done. I promise. It's still early. Anybody here? And I say, preacher, I'm lost. I, I despise the sacrifice of Christ. I am not his child. I don't care that he died for me. I don't care if I go to hell. I don't care. Anybody like that tonight? Say, preacher, I don't care if I go to hell. Really, I, I want you to be honest. Yeah, come on, sir. Alright, let me ask you a question. If you're not saved tonight, I'm not going to drag you by the arm. You guys can be my now. I'm not going to point you out. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm just going to ask you one simple question. If you died right now, where would you go? Right now. Think about that. You heard a message on hell yesterday, some of you. 
and some of you are still not saved. Do you know for a fact that you're born again? Anyway, at night, real quickly, say, Preacher, I'm not 100% sure I'm saved. I don't know for a fact that if I die tonight, that I would go to heaven. Would you just pray for me? I'm not going to grab you by the arm. Would you just pray for me, Preacher? Because I do want to understand. I don't want a heart in my heart. I don't want to despise the sacrifice of Christ. Would you just raise your hand? And by raising your hand, you're saying, Preacher, I'm not 100% sure I'm saved. Yeah, come on. Just raise your hand. Would you raise your hand? Just raise your hand up and say, Preacher, I'm not sure I'm, I'm not 100% sure I'm saved. Anybody lost? All right, let me ask you a question. Everybody who's been born again, washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, saved and knows they're saved and knows they're on their way to heaven. Would you raise your hand? Everyone who knows they are 100% sure they're saved. Okay, now would you put your hands down? Now, there's a couple people that didn't raise their hand when I asked if they were lost. There's a couple people that didn't raise their hand when I asked if they were saved. So I don't know which one of the two are you. So here's the deal. What's going to damn you to hell, let me explain to you real quickly, your pride. You don't think you need God. Yeah. Right? Okay. So I'll tell you what. If you don't need God, give your breath back to Him. Just give Him, your, just give him back your breath. He says, not, what do you mean? It's God that gives you breath. That that is. God breathed into Adam. Breath. And he became a living soul. And the spirit without the body is dead. And God gave you breath. And he and if I said in him we have our being in Acts chapter 17. <laughs> it is by him all things consist. The very fact that you're alive in your heart is beating. It's because of God. I watched a man die in front of me, two men die in front of me through the years. And I can tell you that each time they tried to resuscitate them and bring them back, they never could. When it's your time for death, you can't cancel the appointment. That's right. All right, so I'm going to ask you one last time. If you are not sure you're saved, I'm not going to drag it on. I'm done. Okay? If you don't care, it's your choice. Yeah. But would you just raise your hand and say, Preacher, I'm not saved. And I don't care. Would you pray for me? And I promise you, I will pray for you. Anybody like that, I'll just raise your hand up high and say, I'm not 100% sure I'm saved. Anybody else? Alright. I'm not going to drag it on. Like I said, let's pray. Lord, I love you. God, I know this. That Lord, you gave mankind 120 years to get on the ark. Yeah. Yeah. And yet God only eight got on that ark. Mm -hmm. And all the rest felt your wrath and your judgment. And Lord, you were right in drawing them. You are right. That's Kevin. right. And Lord, you are right in sending people to hell. That's right. To reject your son. So Lord, I pray for those who are hard-hearted, for those who really don't care. I pray, God, that you deal with them, convict them. I pray, God, with all my heart, and I beg you that you would give them a glimpse of hell. Mm -hmm. Help them to see Jesus Christ crucified. Mm -hmm. Help them to realize, God, they are spitting in the face of your yeah. son. Help them, God, to see their need for salvation. God, remove the scales that are blinding them. Their pride is what's hindering them from getting saved. I'm not going to. I'm not going to come down and talk to them. But Lord, if they want to be saved, if they want to be born again, Pastor Shrine and I will talk to them any moment, any second, any time. Amen. Lord, we pray, God, that they would be honest. I think a lot of people, God, who are not saved, are just not honest. That's right. They're not honestly seeking for you. Just like a. Lord, the reason why a thief can't find a cop is because he ain't looking for him. And I think, Lord, a lot of people just ain't looking for you, Lord. That's why they can't find you. Lord, your word promised that if we search for you, with all our heart we'll find you in Jeremiah 29. So, Lord, I pray for those who are not saved, for those who are not born again, that they will come under great conviction by the Holy Ghost of God, and that they'll repent before it's too late and become born again by the end of the week. Their time is short, Lord. Help them realize that. And Lord, the rapture is so soon. Help those who don't care this week, God, to care that are saved. To have a tender heart again, Lord. To be able to cry the invitation, to be able to cry on the songs, to be able to cry on a preacher. 
word to have a tender heart when they leave here. Where the world is a way of corrupting them, and violating yeah, them, that's and violating right. them. Where we love you, and we pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.